On September 13, 1959, Luna 2 was the first human-made object to reach another world, the Moon. On Wednesday, April 12, 1961, Yuri Gagarin became the first human to travel into space aboard Vostok 1. On July 21st of 1969, Neil Armstrong was the first human to step on the surface of another celestial body. On December 15, 1970, the Venera 7 probe made the first successful landing on another planet. On August 25, 2012, the Voyager 1 probe, just over 19 billion kilometers from the Sun, left the heliopause behind and becoming the first human-made object to reach interstellar space. Hi, and welcome to Astro Science, and it is expected that the next big step for humanity will be the arrival of men on Mars during this decade. But once this happens, what will be the next big step? They can be many. One, for example, could be the construction of a ship capable of going at speeds close to the speed of light, or the arrival on an exoplanet, or the contact with an extraterrestrial civilization, or the discovery of a parallel universe. But what is the limit? The limit is C, 300,000 kilometers per second, the speed of light. When we think of the expansion of the human being throughout the vast space, it is usually imagined as a summation of everything, a human civilization spread throughout the galaxy, throughout the Milky Way. It is incredible to stop to think that our descendants may one day achieve such a feat. But can it really be achieved? Proxima Centauri is the closest star to the Sun. It is 4.22 light years away. Representing distances using this magnitude, the light year, is very practical but it's not representative at all. Because 4.22 light years is a colossal distance. Without going any further, if we make a trip at the speed of 11 kilometers per second, the highest speed ever reached by a human being in a spaceship, it would take 115,000 years. And just to go then you'll have to come back. The entire journey would last longer than the entire existence of humanity so far. But we could go faster. If we managed to go 99% of the speed of light, it would only take about 7 months. Although that would be only for the inhabitants of the ship, because on Earth they would see something different. When the ship returns, 8 years would have passed, while for the crew it would only have been a little over a year. And this is the second problem. As predicted by the theory of relativity, the faster the object goes, the slower time passes for it. That is, the faster an object goes, the further into the future it travels. Let us imagine that these two objects are, initially, at the same instant of time. Now, this object that has moved has traveled very slightly, but it has traveled to the future. If this is applied to spaceship travel, the faster we go, the faster we travel into the future. And this would have pretty bad consequences, because by the time we come back from a distant trip to another star or another exoplanet, most likely our loved ones would already be dead. And perhaps the changes that the Earth would have experienced would be so great for us to be able to adapt once we come back from the trip. But what if we ignore this and ignore this little setback? And we start traveling to other stars, other planets, other galaxies? No, let's calm down. We said that to travel to the closest star to Earth, it would take seven months. But thing is, to travel to the most Earth-like planet found so far, we would need 67 years. This is not viable. Who would embark on a journey that would not end in his life? Oof. This is very depressing. Seen this way, it seems that the human being will not go beyond the solar system. But, fortunately, there are two possible solutions. Although it is important to note that we're entering a completely theoretical field of physics, whose conclusions have not yet been put into practice, and, therefore, it is not certain that they are definitive solutions. 
The first solution is something called wormholes. They are predicted by the theory of general relativity and are essentially nothing more than two points in space connected to each other. They would allow us to travel between two very distant points in the universe instantaneously. Much has been said about this concept, although always in the field of science fiction. But do they exist or not? A hypothetical type of wormhole, the Lorentz wormhole, is actually physically possible. The problem is that they require strange matter. Strange matter could be defined as a liquid that contains three flavors, three types of quarks. Quarks are the fundamental constituents of matter. Neutrons, for example, are made up of two types of quarks, two down quarks and one up quark. Strange matter is composed primarily of unbound quarks, of the up, down and strange types. This type of matter has not yet been detected, although it is believed to exist in the core of neutron stars, and more speculatively, in form of droplets called strangelets, which can vary from the size of a water droplet to the size of stars. This has been called quark stars, although at the moment the strange matter is still that, unknown matter that is not even known if it exists. We said before that the main limit is that no ship can travel through space faster than the speed of light. But what if instead of traveling through space, we move with space? This is the ISS Enterprise, and it looks spectacular. It is a conceptual superluminal spacecraft designed in 2013 by Harold White, a NASA scientist who based on the work of Miguel Alcubierre, a Mexican known for having developed a mathematical model called the Alcubierre metric, which would allow faster than light travel without violating the physical principle that states that nothing can exceed that speed. It consists of the thrust by curvature, which is the second solution. This method would allow traveling at speeds several times faster than the speed of light, but without suffering from the relativistic effects that it entails, such as the time dilation and mass increases. The basic idea of this technology is to create a small bubble in time-space around the ship and generate distortions in it so that the bubble moves away from the point of origin and approaches its destination. The distortions generated would be expansion behind the bubble, moving it away from the origin and contraction in front of the bubble, bringing it closer to the destination. The warp bubble would be located in one of the distortions of space-time, on which it would ride in a similar way as surfers do on a wave of the sea. But the ISS Enterprise is just that, an idea, since it would also require strange matter and a lot of energy. According to Shen Carroll, a cosmologist specializing in general relativity, that is, one of the people who knows the most about curvature thrust, this technology is highly unlikely to ever work. According to him, in order to propel the ship, 350 kilograms of matter and 350 kilograms of antimatter would be needed to produce the necessary energy. 350 kilos of matter are easy to find, but 350 kilos of antimatter are not that easy. Because antimatter is the most expensive substance in the world. Currently, a single gram of antimatter costs around 100 billion dollars. But let's be optimistic and imagine that the cost of the gram were reduced to just 10 billion dollars. Then, the fuel for a trip with a warp drive ship would cost 3.5 trillion dollars. Or what is the same? The wealth produced by the whole world during 40 years. Aside from these power issues, it has not yet been shown that the Alcubierre metric can work. It is simply theoretically possible. Then according to this pessimistic but realistic scientist, the probability that one day it will be possible to travel with a warp trust ship is much less than 1%. And the chances of it happening in the next 100 years is less than 0.01%. However, and this is really the most important thing, at no point it is said that such technology is impossible. Let's be optimistic, because for example, in 2011, NASA announced that huge amounts of antimatter had been detected in the Van Allen belts in the Earth's magnetosphere. Or in April 2015, scientists managed to make one laser pulse travel faster than another, possibly pointing to the first evidence of a warping bubble in space-time. At the end of the day, it's just a matter of time. One of the main arguments used to defend that interstellar travel is impossible, it's basically that if such travels were possible, the Milky Way would already be colonized by some extraterrestrial civilization. And it is not. So, such travels are impossible, right? But think of it another way. The first extraterrestrial civilization to colonize the Milky Way wouldn't encounter any other civilizations at first. 
so they might think that the technology needed to develop expansion or colonization would be impossible. But you'll say, what are you telling me? That the humans are one of the first species that are trying to colonize the Milky Way? Well, why not? Let's actually run the numbers. The Earth is about 4.6 billion years old, which is also about a third of the age of the universe, 13.7 billion years. By this, I mean that in all the time that the universe has existed, there could only be three generations of planet Earths. We may be one of the earliest civilizations in this galaxy. Because there really hasn't been that long. If you compare how long the universe has been around to how long it has left, it's very young. Some species will have to be the first to colonize the galaxy. Why can it be us? It is difficult to imagine the limits that our species will have. Human nature has always been this way. The key to our survival and what makes us who we are was and will be exploration and curiosity. That innate desire to know how everything works and to go where no one has ever gone before. If we had stayed in Africa, we would probably have become extinct. So if we stay here, it might happen. The Earth is now the only thing we have. We must take care of her as if she was our mother. But sooner or later, humanity will come of age. This planet will not be able to support us forever. So if we want to survive, we must look for other homes. It may seem like an impossible thing to do, but who would have told early humans that we would end up stepping on that pale white light they saw in the sky at night? Thank you very much for watching the video and goodbye.